Welcome to the Voyage of the Monk podcast, the podcast where I, Fawn, an Irish folklorist, explain the voyage of St. Brendan the Navigator to my wonderful wife, Alice, who is an American. Hi. <laughs> that's the premise. That's, that's it. That's the show. <laughs> ba da ba ba da ba ba Now... When we left our heroes, they had just parted ways with the king of the angel birds before being overwhelmed by a sudden tempest. Can Brendan and his monks survive? How will they reach the island foretold by the king of the angel birds? Will they choose the right well to drink from? All this and more in this exciting episode of The Voyage of the Monk. Angel birds. Yeah, the, the birds. Yeah, the angel were, birds. That the were birds, secretly angels. The birds that were angels and the sec- secretly angels, the birds of the... Technically fairies, depending on how you look at it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so yeah, they, they, they had just be- left the island, left the angel birds, and uh, they were overwhelmed by a sudden tempest, horrible storm, and they're grand. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. The 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 storm ends, and and that's it. the The single sentence quote I gave out last time that was it. That was that was everything that was about the storm. Yeah. It was an anticlimax on purpose. Yeah. And in case you can't tell, we're recording this again because it didn't work properly the last time. There were technical <laughs> issues, <laughs> so things are going to be a little less surprising for Red this time. I don't know. I have ADHD. I could have completely I'm, forgotten I'm everything. Just going to say the ADHD is probably going to help. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the storm wasn't a problem, but after the storm, they see the island that they've been looking for. And it takes them 11 days to get there. How? So. They see it. But then it still takes them 11 days. Maybe the winds are very, very slow or very, very weak. Shit, you could have fucking walked at that point. On the water? Yes. (laughs) If it took them 11 days. (laughs) But yeah, I generally think that like I I think usually when you can see the land, you're 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 going to get there in like just a couple of days at most, I'd say, if you're close enough to see it. Yeah, seriously. Anyway, I quote: "And after they came to an anchor and anon, the monks went to land, and when they had long walked about at the last, they found two fair wells. That one was fair and clear water, and that other." was somewhat <coughs> troubly and thick. Troubly meaning, like, unpleasant and, right. and nasty looking. Uh-huh. So, yeah, one well looks nice. Uh-huh. And one well looks awful. And it feels like that th- that's going to be important. It does. We already had a big discussion about this last time. <laughs> Uh, it feels like there's going to be some kind of riddle or a problem that can only be solved by drinking from the right well. Yeah. Like, that that's thats what we expect. Yeah. But Brendan tells them not to drink from either well. Because if they're patient, they'll be rewarded. Okay. And, sure enough, Brendan is proven right because very soon a beautiful old man shows up to welcome them to the island. Uh, he's the abbot of the 24 monks the king of the angel birds told them they'd be finding. <coughs> and he leads them to the abbey. And as they're on their way, they pass dozens of perfectly lovely, clear, narratively important seeming wells. So they just have the one well that's shite. Yes. Why would they... Can you fix a well? You, you, I, I assume when you dig a well, you get to the water you get to. Well, would you not board it off? Why would you just leave it there? I don't know. It's fine. <laughs> All right, so back into quotation. And then the abbot welcomed St. Brendan and his fellowship and kissed them full meekly and took St. Brendan by the, <clears throat> by the hem and led him with his monks into a fair hall and set them down a row upon the bench. And the abbot of the place washed all their feet with fair water of the well they saw before, and after led them into the dining room, 
and there set them among his convent. And anon there came one by the purveyance of God, which served them well of meat and drink. For every monk had set before him a fair white loaf, and white roots and herbs, which were right delicious. But they knew not what roots they were, and they drank of the water of the fair clear well that they saw before when they came first to land, which St. Brendan forbade them. Okay. Do you ever just have guests over and you wash their feet? That That is actually a common thing. Is it uh, really? From the period, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, even, uh, and among Christ in Christianity as well, like there, there are loads of references to Jesus washing people's feet. Um, and so that became kind of a, a priest thing. Okay, yeah, fair enough. Um, but yeah, the, the, the water for the feet washing was from the nice well. Uh-huh. And the water that they were drinking was from the nice well. Uh-huh. So the entire time, the two wells were just wells. There was no puzzle. There was no riddle. The, the, the nice well represented nice things. And the nasty well represented nasty things. This writer sucks. <laughs> well, like we were saying last time we recorded this, that's that's a very obvious um, conclusion to come to from a modern perspective. That uh -huh. that like the bad well is going to be the good one. The 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 nasty looking well is going to be the good one. But that's a kind of modern idea. Okay. It's a it's a modern narrative convention that we're we're coming into this very very old story with. But it's like, why would you even have mentioned a bad well at all then? So 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 that it can represent bad things. But then, would you not have something to do with the bad well then? Like maybe, I don't know, a plague monster crawls out. No, you just, you just don't drink out of the bad well because bad things will happen. All right. <laughs> yeah, like it, it, it's very simple. Um, All right. It's just simpler than we'd <laughs> expect. Okay. <laughs> <coughs> All right. Excuse me. We're we're both getting over COVID. Yeah. Woo which is why re-recording took a while. <laughs> so you might also be expecting that with twenty-four monks, they might have a little farm going, maybe a little bakery, and they they grow and make all of their own food. Yeah. Well, no. Okay. <laughs> um. Like, that, that makes an awful lot of sense. Uh, like, it's a good conclusion to come to. But because this is a medieval religious parable, every good thing comes from God. Alright. Every single good thing comes from God. Jesus. So, the abbot explains to Brendan that every single day, God sends a kindly old man to bring them their food and drink. They have no idea where he comes from <coughs> and no idea where he goes when he leaves. Okay. So he brings 11 loaves of bread on weekdays, 24 loaves of bread on Sundays and feast days. And he brought 48 loaves of bread that day because he knew St. Brendan would arrive. And this has been going on every single day since the abbot's monks arrived on this island 80 years beforehand. So they've been eating nothing but bread? It says that, like, it, it described them also eating herbs and roots. Which is ba basically, in, in that period, herbs and roots, that's, that's vegetables. That, that's just vegetables. Uh, it'd be your, your, your carrots and your parsnips and your... Your, your your lettuce and your spinach and everything. Okay. That still sounds like it sucks, but <laughs> all right. It's, it's, it's all carbs and veg, but um, it does also say that all of the food is provided by the purveyance of God. So the impression I get is that it only goes into, like, it only describes the amount of bread that the old man is bringing, but he is bringing all of the food. He is bringing the herbs and roots as well. It's just not going into detail on that. Yeah, okay. But, um, 
I, I, it makes sense that they go into the bread because bread is very symbolic in Christianity. There's mm -hmm. there's the, the, the bread at the Last Supper. There's like the Holy Communion, obviously, which is the bread at the Last Supper. And um, the loaves and the fishes parable, all that kind of thing. That sounds like torture. Bread every day. Bread and vegetables. Bread and vegetables every day. And there's white bread as well, which is way less nutritious. But yeah, yeah, yeah. So this old man has been bringing them their food for every day for 80 years. Uh-huh. They have no idea where he's from. Uh-huh. Presumably they have never asked. Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> he could be peeing on those loaves of bread. He could be spitting in it. There could be poison. It Wh could be why? anything. Why would he be peeing on the bread? I don't know. That's the point. Where did he come from? Who is he? <laughs> why well, would he do anything? Why is he even bringing them the bread at all? Well, apparently because of God. Well, what if God, quote, unquote, unquote, told him to pee on the bread? They don't know. Why would God tell him to pee on the bread? Why does God do anything? <laughs> <coughs> I, I think they'd notice if the bread had been peed on. I'm just saying, like, that guy could be doing anything and claiming he's from God. Well, that's true. That's true. He could be, like, just some fucking weirdo. It could be getting bread from the devil. Yeah. It devil could be, bread. It could be anything. <coughs> All right, so you know, I, I did say we shouldn't be expecting modern narrative conventions. Uh-huh. Except something very modern is about to happen. Okay. Um, you, you, you know how, like, if, you're, if, 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 if you have a friend who's really into LARPs or, or tabletop roleplay, uh -huh. and they, they really, really like their character, and they will, like, at every possible opportunity, try to dump the entire backstory on you. Uh-huh. Yeah, the abbot does that to St. Brendan. Okay. He tells them that he and his monks were originally from St. Patrick's Abbey in Ireland. That the weather here on the island is always beautiful and nobody ever gets sick. That there were seven candles burning in the chapel when they arrived 80 years ago and they have never stopped burning and never needed to be replaced. And there is also a giant crystal crucifix hanging in the, uh, hanging in the chapel. The monks have, uh, he, he goes into detail on how they have set up their timetable, talking about how half of them will have their meals at one time, while the other half continue singing in the <coughs> choir, so they can make sure there is always, constantly, someone singing in the choir. Okay. And also... He says that for the past 24 years of the 80 years that they've lived there, they had taken a vow of silence. This actually sounds like hell. <laughs> Bread every fucking day, carrots every fucking day, and now they won't even talk to each other? <laughs> These bitches stop talking to each other because they hate each other, not because of a vow of silence. Yeah, they've been living together for 56 years. Uh-huh. In a place that never changes. Uh-huh. Like, that no one gets sick. Yep. The weather is always the same. Uh-huh. The food <laughs> is always the same. These motherfuckers were on the urge of violence. The edge of homicide. The only way that they could not kill each other is if they're just like, you know what, we can't talk to each other anymore. Because if you another word comes out of your fucking mouth, I'm going to rip your lips off. Do they even have anything to talk about? No. Anyway. No. Like, <laughs> These men are miserable. They want to die. <laughs> like, the dregs. The dregs of conversation is when you have to talk about the weather. And they can't even talk about that. Yeah, there is no weather. There's nothing new to say about it. This seems a lot like hell. <laughs> I'm just saying. This is the bad place. They don't even, like, they don't even have jobs to do. They can't even change the candles. This, this is the bad place. Like, they could at least complain, oh, the candle's dripping all over the place. Oh, this one doesn't fit in the thing properly. But no. They don't even have a farm. <laughs> but Brendan, hearing about all of this, weeps for joy. There he goes again. And, and like, we are, are fully, 
supportive of crying on this podcast. Yeah, no, I love I love men who cry. E- emotional vulnerability is a very good thing. However, the bit about this I'm judging is why are you so happy, Brent? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> this this sounds awful. I would I I would throw myself into the sea. <laughs> Cuz the, the the other thing is, the other thing is the abbot just spouted a giant wall of text at Brendan. Yeah. And it, it's it been it's been said that the abbot's monks and Brendan's monks were making merry together. Okay. Which suggests this vow of silence. Like, if it was just the abbot <coughs> who was talking, that would make a certain amount of sense because there's usually, like, dispensations in a vow of silence for, like, explaining things to newcomers. Uh-huh. And that kind of thing. But... That all of the monks appear to be talking to Brendan's monks, but just not to each other. There's no vow of silence. These men hate each other. Like, un- un- unless they're, they're, they're like, they, they know a common form of some kind of sign language that has since gone extinct. Or, or, or they're, they're playing, a, they're really good at charades or something. I understand how they're making merry together. These there is no vow of silence. These men just hate each other. <laughs> <clears throat> or they're bored of each other. Same thing. It, well, I, yeah, I suppose the one could lead to the other. Um, <laughs> and yet, the only other human contact they've had for eighty years is the guy who brings their food. Oh, and there's one other person, doesn't really count as human contact, but we'll get into it later. I don't know if you remember or not. Probably not. Anyway, Brendan (laughs) is so overcome with joy, despite not assessing the situation logically, and begs to be allowed to stay on the island forever. Okay. And I'll quote, And then St. Brendan desired of the abbot that he and his monks might dwell there forever with him. To whom the abbot said, Sir, that may ye do not Sir, that may ye not do in no wise. For our Lord hath showed to you in what manner ye shall be guided till the seventh year be fulfilled, and after that term thou shalt with thy monks return into Ireland in safety. But one of the two monks that came last to you shall dwell on the island of Anchors, and that other shall go quick alive to hell. What? Yes. Why? Well, remember in the first episode, uh-huh. um, Brendan and his monks, they were about to set off, and two more monks ran up to the boat and asked to join. Yeah. And Brendan said, okay, but if you do, one of you's going to hell. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, th- 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 this abbot is confirming it. One of them is, neither of them <laughs> is going to go home. And one of them is going to go to hell. And it says... He, uh, the other shall go quick alive to hell. Which means he isn't even going to die. Why, though? <laughs> Why is he going to hell? What did he do? We'll, we'll, we'll get into that when we get to it. But okay. Yeah, yeah, it's just confirmed. No, yeah, that one of you, I don't know who, but one of these two is going to hell. Yeah, all right. <laughs> and what do you think the Isle of Anchors is? Who fucking knows at this point? <laughs> Nothing would surprise me. They could tell me that this island is literally just made out of anchors, and I'd be like, yeah, okay, that tracks. <laughs> yeah, I kind of think that maybe the, the abbot just doesn't want Brendan to stay. Oh, definitely. He's like, sir, that may ye not do in no wise. <laughs> that, that, that feels like... You know when you're very, you're trying to tell someone to fuck off in the politest way possible? Uh-huh. That's how that feels to me. Yes, 100%. That, that, that is the tone of that phrasing in my mind. Yep. And it does describe, it does say that there's only enough seats in the chapel for 24 monks. So having another bunch there, it's going to fuck things up for them. People start sitting in each other's laps. I mean, that might give them something to talk about, at least. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, after this conversation happens, an angel flew in through the window and lit all the lanterns and then left through the window the end. <laughs> okay. All right. 
Bye. <laughs> oh, that's just Joe. He just does that. Brendan, of course, thinks this is amazing. This is marvelous. And the abbot says, "Now nah, that happens every day. Yeah, uh-huh. It's, again, it's it's like it's like the the two wells. <laughs> it's it's just like we got an angel doing menial tasks. Look how amazing this place is. God, look how good it is. There's an angel cha- lighting the lanterns because we're so cool. God, yeah, all right. <coughs> but do you think? Do you think the angel and the guy who brings the food? Do you think they gossip about the monks? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> this is like God's like little experiment. They're just like a petting zoo or something. So it's 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 a it's a social experiment. Yeah, yeah, it's a little it's a little thought experiment. What happens if you put some monks on an island and tell them that everything that they have is from God? I've I've now got this idea of <laughs> Of God as one of those, like, prank YouTube channels. Absolutely. <laughs> Except, like, one of those douchebag ones where the prank- pranks are, like, really mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and then they, they come along afterwards and say, Oh, no, 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 I, this is all just a social experiment. Yeah. <laughs> Like punked on MTV. Yeah, I was like, been punked. It's just, just, just trying to. No, I, I didn't do a bad thing. It's a social experiment. It's okay. Yeah. Uh huh. Yep. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> He's taking the piss. Because yeah, this this island isn't paradise. Yeah. It's not. It's not. It's not heaven. It certainly it, don't sound like it. It's not the Garden of Eden. It's really unclear of which of those paradise is supposed to be. Honestly. Uh huh. No, it sounds like a fucking nightmare, honestly. No, it doesn't sound fun. It doesn't. It sounds intensely boring. It sounds like all you have to do there is eat and chant and shit and sleep. And then wait to do those things. And also, like, you, 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 this is this island is. They've been on this island for eighty years to literally be a pit stop for <coughs> Brendan. That's what this. That's what they're there for. <coughs> it. This is the bad place. I meant it. It sounds awful. These two fucko angels. One gives them bread. One lights the candles. They have they have nothing to do. And these angels just show up. And one of them's like, "Here's bread," and the other one's like, "Oh, I'll light your candles for you." This is the only things that they had to do. The old, like, realistically, the old man probably is an angel. Uh huh. Um, it doesn't say he's an angel, but like. What else would he be? Like, it's probably the same angel. Yeah, probably. Though with the angel, what I'm imagining is like a proper like four heads and each of them of a different animal and then six wings like uh-huh. flying in the window dressed as a janitor. Uh-huh. And he just kind of faffs about with the candles. But it's like that neighbor who like has to sweep their front porch anytime there's like drama yeah. happening on the street. Yeah, yeah. He's just, like, taking as long as he can and, like, observing and, like, seeing what the monks are up to and... (coughs) Yeah, no, that's exactly what it is. And it... Oh, God, I would... I would throw myself into the sea and just take my chances. You'd probably, like... You'd probably end up on Jason's back and Jason would take you back to the island. Yeah, it's fine. Me and Jason are bros. (laughs) No, I, I feel like in that situation, Jason's more of a jailer. I guess. Making sure you can't escape. <laughs> oh, ba- right. I thought you meant back to Ireland. But no. 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 Fuck Jason. Jason is <laughs> bro. <laughs> but at least it would be something to do. Just racing against Jason. Yeah. Just see how far you can get. <laughs> and yeah, the, 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 the angel birds are definitely snitches. They're oh, definitely yeah. flying around waiting for anyone who tries to leave. Uh-huh. So they could go tell Jason. Yeah, and Jason fucks you back on the island, and then you're like, all right, Jason, see you next week. (laughs) Uh, I think we've gone on a bit of a tangent there. A little bit. So we're going to end it. So this has been a little bit late. It has not been the same monk time. It is the same monk channel, though. Mm -hmm. And we will be back. Probably at the original monk time, but certainly the same monk channel. Yeah, uh uh-huh.